Let's look at the probability density functions for the angular wave functions. Remember that our probability in terms of the angles is going to be the angular functions, y star y, times the volume element that involves the angles, so sine theta d theta d phi. In general, these spherical harmonics, which are the um, solutions to this angular mom uh, momentum problem, are complex functions, so they involve the irrational number i, and they are, notice, very, um, functions of two variables. Instead of one variable, like the radial probability functions, which only depended on r. Since we are now graphing the probability as a function of two variables, we have three-dimensional pictures instead of our um, two-dimensional graphs like we did for the radial probability distributions. So if I start with the simplest spherical harmonic, where I have L is equal to zero and M is equal to zero, I have just something that just looks like a sphere. And in fact, there is no imaginary part to this wave function, and this wave function is a real wave function, so the real part of the spherical harmonic is equal to that spherical harmonic function. When I think about these functions, and I want to think about the nodes for this function, these functions, I'm thinking about angular nodes. And so I'm asking myself, if I, if I stay at a particular distance r, away from the center of this function, and I walk around at any angle, do I, does the function change sign? And for this sphere, there is no place where the function changes sign as I walk around on the outside of this sphere. So this spherical function has no nodes, no angular nodes. Let's look at the next spherical harmonic where we have L equal to one, and m equal to minus 1. When we have l equals to 1 and m equal to minus 1, we have both a real and an imaginary part to this function. So let's look at the real part of this function. The imaginary part of this function looks pretty much the same, just rotated a little bit. So if we look at the real part of this function and we try to ask ourselves if we have any nodes in this function, we have to think about this in terms of angles because this is a uh, function in terms of the angles phi and theta. So remember that the phi angle goes from the z-axis down to the xy plane, and the theta angle is around um, the, on the xy plane, moving around on the xy plane. So I can see that if I start in this blue part, which has negative values for the wave function, and I move around in phi, I'm going to cross over um, to a positive part, so positive to negative. So there is a node when we're thinking about walking around in phi. And we walk around in theta, we also have a node. We start positive and we go negative if we walk around on that x, y plane. So when we're talking about nodes in terms of angles, we need to think about those nodes in terms of planes. So there is a plane that I can draw where if I walk across that plane, either in the theta or the phi direction, then I will have um, switched from positive to negative, and so that is a nodal plane. If I now look at the L equals one, M equals zero wave function, I'm back to having no imaginary part of this wave function. So whenever m equals zero, my wave function is completely real. So what's happened now is we still have the same sort of shape of the wave function, but now it's oriented along the z-axis. And we can see that we still have one nodal plane that we can identify where we would cross from positive to negative. My last L equals one wave function has an M of plus one. And when I have an M of plus one, I'm back to a wave function that looks very similar to the minus one, except that the orientation of the um, imaginary relative to the real has changed. And so um, 
when I have minus one or plus one, when I add, when I um, put these imaginary and, and real parts together, what I end up with is this donut shaped um, wave function. The difference is that when I have an m of minus one, I can think about this as having a counterclockwise rotation. And when I have an m of plus one, I can think of this as having a positive clockwise rotation. So now let's look at the L equals two wave functions. And here I have L equals two, M equals minus two. So remember that when L equals two, I have the possibility of M equals minus two, minus one, zero, one, and two. So this is the L equals two, M equals minus two wave function. Again, we can see that um, the different colors of these lobes represent different um, signs of the wave function. And so we can see that if we walk around in theta on the real part, that we're going to go from positive to negative once. That's one node. Positive to negative again. That's two nodes. Remember that theta only goes from zero to, to pi, so we only have to go halfway around. So there are two nodal planes that when I cross those planes, I will end up crossing from positive to negative. So there's one plane, and here is the other plane, and they are perpendicular to each other. So we can say that when L is equal to two, we have M equal to minus two, minus one, zero, one, or two, we will end up with two nodal planes. So again, I have in a real and an imaginary part, and when I put those two together, I end up with this donut-shaped um, figure again. So if I look at the L equals two, M equals minus one, then I end up again with these sort of cloverleaf-shaped cloverleaf real and imaginary parts, but when I put these two guys together, I end up with this kind of um, strange looking hourglass type of shape. Again, we can see that there are two nodal planes that I can um, define in the real part of this function. So again, there's two nodal planes because L equals two. When I get to M equals zero with L equal to two, I again have no imaginary part. Remember that whenever we have m equals zero, there's no imaginary part to this wave function. Now I get this sort of familiar looking d orbital type of shape, and um, there are still two nodal planes here. They're a little bit harder to see because actually they are cones cone-shaped nodal planes. So if I'm walking around in, um, in phi and I start at this positive lobe up here and I walk across this cone, I will get to this negative part of the function. And then if I cross this cone, I will go back to a positive part of the function. So again, I have two nodal planes. They're just not straight planes, they're cones that are wrapped around this shape. If I continue on and look at L equals two, M equals plus one, you can see that the minus one and the plus one functions look very similar. And again, the difference is going to be the clockwise and counterclockwise rotations, clockwise for plus one and counterclockwise for minus one. And then as you might expect, when we get to L equals two, M equals plus two, the plus two and the minus two look pretty much exactly the same. Um, again, just the clockwise and the counterclockwise rotation. So we could keep going and we will find that the number of angular nodes is equal to L, just the L quantum number. So let's see how we can correlate these shapes that we just looked at to our known shapes for the orbitals that we know from general chemistry. So from general chemistry, we know that S orbitals with an L equals zero quantum number are spherical. And that 
is exactly what we saw when we looked at the spherical harmonics for L equals zero, M equals zero. So that one looks good. Remember that our P orbitals, according to general chemistry, um, have an L equal one, and these are dumbbell shaped, and there are three of them because we have m equals minus one, zero, and one, so there are three of those. And in general chemistry, chemistry we associate those three as having a shape along, a dumbbell shape along the z-axis, and then a dumbbell shape around the x-axis, and then a dumbbell shape around the y-axis. And we say that this is pz, this is px, and this is py. But we can see that when m was equal to zero, we got this shape. But when we looked at m equals minus one or one, we ended up with this donut-shaped wave function that doesn't look anything like px or py. In addition, these wave functions are imaginary. So if we take a linear superposition of the m minus one and the m one solutions to the um, spherical harmonics, and we write that px is actually equal to one over the square root of two times y one one plus y one minus one. And we write that py is equal to one over the square root of two times y one one minus y one minus one. We will end up with real functions and they will have the um, shapes that we expect to see based on our general chemistry knowledge. In a similar way, the d orbitals that we're used to thinking about are linear combinations as well, except for dz squared, which is a pure eigenstate when m equals zero. Remember that when m equals zero, our spherical harmonics are real functions, and so this is already a real function, and it has our familiar dz squared shape that we already saw with the spherical harmonic. The other four possible d orbitals that we know from general chemistry, so dyz, are linear combinations. dyz is a linear combination of um, y2, 1, and y2, minus 1. So this is your familiar d orbital with the cloverleaf shape that lies on the z, y plane. Then we also have dxz, which is the linear combination where we take y2, 1, and subtract y2, minus 1. This is the cloverleaf that lies on the xz plane. And then we can have a linear combination where we have dxy, which is the linear combination where we take the y2, 2, and subtract y2, minus 2. And this is the cloverleaf shape that lies on the um, xy plane and um, is between the axes. And then if we take um, the other linear combination, we get the dx squared minus y squared, so 1 over the square root of 2, y2, 2 plus y2 minus 2. And this gives us our cloverleaf that has the um, leaves of the clover that are on the x and y axes. So what we learn from this 
is that the L quantum number changes the shape of the orbitals and the m quantum number changes the orientation. So when I take m plus or minus one and take those um, linear combinations, I get different orientations, real functions in different orientations. And when m equals zero, I have a different orientation. Same thing down here, if l equals two, I have these um, lobes that have uh, two nodal planes instead of just one, so the shape is different. And when I um, take linear combinations with m equals plus or minus 1 versus m equals plus or minus 2 versus m being 0, my orbitals are oriented in different directions.